Okay, welcome to Surface Area and Volume. This is Outcome M3. And we're going to do a bit of a review from last year of Surface Area of Right Prisms. So, first question is, well, what are right prisms? Well, all of these images that you see before you are examples of right prisms. A right prism has a base, and that base continues on through the object. It's projected all the way through the object and remains the same. For example, on the right here, we've got a triangular base, and that triangular base can still be found on the other side of the prism, okay, and that triangle is essentially projected through this height. Okay, So a right prism stands straight up, and an object like a triangle is projected through three dimensions through a height h. Okay, alternatively, we could have a base, like on the bottom here, a circle, or a base that's a rectangle, or whatever we want for our right prism. Okay, to find the surface area of right prisms, we need to know how to find areas of some basic shapes. Okay, well, for example, we have a rectangle area. Well, every rectangle has got a length and a width. And to find the area of a rectangle, well, that area is really equal to the length of the rectangle times its width. For a circle, well, every circle has got something called a radius r. Okay, that's the length from the center to the outside of the circle. And the area for a circle, well, that's just pi times r squared. Okay, what about a triangle? Well, a triangle has got, itself has got a base and a height. So every triangle has a base and a height, and the base and the height should meet at 90 degrees. And the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. If you remember these three formulas, Commit them to memory right now, because all we'll need throughout the entirety of this section are these three formulas. Okay, so find the surface area of a right rectangular prism with a height of 30 meters and a base of 10 meters by 9 meters. Let's take a moment to draw this idea. Okay. So, uh, the base, 10 meters by 9 meters, and that base is projected through a height Wow, my drawing is terrible. I'm sure your drawing is much better than this. A height of 30 meters. Okay, well, how do we find the area? Well, notice that there's a base down here and a base up here. These are the same, right? Each base is 9 meters by 10 meters or 90 meters squared. So we have two of those bases. Okay? Then we also have what's called a lateral area. I have a rectangle on this side. which is 9 meters by 30 meters. So for the lateral rectangles, I have one rectangle 90 by 30. We'll calculate that in a moment. We have a second rectangle that's 90, or sorry, 9 by 30 on the other side of the, tri of the, of the prism. And finally, this front face here, right? This front face has a height of 30 meters and a base length of 10. So we have another 30 meters by 10 meters. And there's a back face on there that's also 30 meters by 10 meters. So the lateral area is composed of four shapes, four rectangles. 9 times 30 gives me 270 meters squared, 
and 10 times 30 gives me 300 meters squared. Okay, well we can add all this up. We've got four lateral areas and we should remember actually that we have two bases of 90 meters squared. Don't lose track of that. And if we add all this up, well, that gives us something. Let's see. I get, if I add it all up, 1,320 meters squared. Okay, one more problem here. Find the surface area of a right cylinder with a height of 8 meters and a radius of 3 meters. Well, again, let me try to draw this object, and please don't judge me for my terrible drawing. I've got a base that's a circle and a height. Hey, that's not so bad. Okay, my height is 8 meters, and the radius of the base is 3 meters. Okay, so let's deal with the base areas. I have one base over here, which is a circle, and another base at the top, which is a circle. So my bases, or bases, are, well, each area is pi r squared, so that's pi times 3 squared. Uh, well, let's see, and I have a second that's also going to be pi times 3 squared. Okay, so we can type that into our calculators, and hopefully I get something reasonable. Let's see. Okay, I typed it incorrectly. I get 28.27 meters squared and 28.27 meters squared for our two bases. Now, what about the lateral area? Ooh, it's kind of a strange shape, isn't it? Well, not really. If we cut this lateral area down the middle, and we unfolded this shape here for the cylinder, what would we get? Well, we'd cut it, and we would actually end up with a rectangle. The cut line will be 8 meters long, and the base, well, that's just the base of the circle that I'm drawing here. What is that? Well, that is the circumference. Okay. Now, the circumference formula, you may not remember that. I've misspelled circumference because I ran out of space. Uh, circumference ends with a CE, by the way. That is actually 2 times pi times r. It's a famous formula that will come up actually again and again as you move on in trigonometry. Okay, so 2 times pi times r. So this side here of this rectangle is 2 times pi times r, which is 3 meters. So if I want to find the area of this rectangle, well, the area is really just 8 times 2 times pi times 3. So the area of my lateral area is 8 times 2 times pi times 3. And while I can type that into my calculator, and let's see what I get. I get 150.796 meters squared. Uh oh, running out of space. Okay, so now I can answer the question. I have a base on the bottom of 28.27. I've got a base above of 28.27, and I've got a lateral area of 150.796. Add it all together and you get, and you get, hold on, just typing it in. Okay, I get 207.3 meters squared. So this area here of all this is 207.3 meters squared, adding it all up together.